Hey everybody, it's Jenny and I am here to share with you today some tricks and tips for stamping in your Happy Planner. Now I have a whole bunch of Happy Planner stamps laid out here on my desk and these are the ones that I am planning on choosing from today to show you how I plan this week in my Happy Planner. They are so versatile, so many really cute designs and just really easy to incorporate into your everyday planning and your memory planning as well. There are four different sets here featured. You can see the two sets on the left, this one which is brand new for the memory planner, this numbered stamp that will help you date your undated planners, and then these individual sheets came in two different, different sets, and they're just really incredibly functional, and I'm going to plan on using most of these today. Now, I am going to tell you a little bit about how to stamp. First, you're gonna need an acrylic block. This is a really, really large one, and you you won't need that size most often. This round stamp block is one that I use all the time. It's a really great size and they also sell really small ones as well. You will want to find one that matches the size of your stamp the best. That's how you will get great results. Now there's lots of different types of inks. We have pigment ink, we have dye ink, and we have chalk ink. The first one that I use most is VersaFine. It is a pigment ink that is formulated to capture small details and to dry very quickly. Pigment ink sits on top of the paper, whereas dye ink, like this one, dyes the fiber. So you might have some bleed through on your planner pages. Now chalk ink is a pigment ink and so it does sit on top of your paper but it comes in lots of beautiful hues. Now these are the inks that I use primarily for my planner stamping. You don't need a huge huge stash. Start with one good stamp pad and see how you like it, get the hang of it, and see what your needs are. Now I can't stress enough that if something works for you and just because I don't use it doesn't mean that it's not great. Now alcohol-free baby wipes are a great way to remove ink from your stamps. Also what you can do is you can take two bowls of warm water, one with a drop of dishwashing soap, and you could take the stamp and wash it off just using your fingertips. Then once it's cleaned, you can rinse it in the other bowl of warm water and then let it air dry. Now I highly, highly, highly recommend this over taking it to the sink and washing it over the drain. And two guesses as to why I, you think that I recommend that versus over the sink. But those are two great ways to clean your stamps. They're very easy, but you don't have to clean them. It won't damage them to leave the ink on there. It's just mostly personal preference for most people. Now I'm going to share with you just the basics of how to stamp. So first you're going to select the stamp that you want to use. And then once you've done that, you will remove the stamp from the clear sheet that it's attached to. It will also come with a back sheet as well, and I'll show that to you right here, like a piece of acetate. Holds, helps hold all of the things together. Then you will press the stamp onto your block, and it will stick right there without any additional items. You will put ink on your stamp. You'll want enough, but not too much. Too much ink will not give you good results. Then you apply firm, even pressure throughout the block, and then voila, you have your stamped image. Now let's show that again. Enough ink, not too much, firm, even pressure, and there's your stamped image. Then so now simply I can take my pen and I can write in all of the details that I need for this particular activity using this particular stamp. Now let me start off by saying that stamping isn't easy. People don't just open up the package and become a great stamper. You do need to practice. You only get better by practicing. Now I love to use alcohol-free baby wipes to clean off my stamps because I'm a very messy crafter. You don't want to wipe them too hard. Just wipe them gently so that you don't tear the stamp. Now. One of the things about alcohol for baby wipes is that they're just really, really easy to use and they're widely available in stores. Now I'm going to use this red VersaFine ink to ink up the first stamp. I'm going to place the stamp and then I'm also going to prime it on the back of my hand. These stamps do require a little bit of help to get the best impression possible and all you need to do is simply rub it over the back of your hand and you will get a great stamping surface. A lot of people talk about using a nail file or all kinds of crazy things. I do not recommend that. I think that there's a lot of room for error there. So simply rubbing the stamp on the back of your hand will do the trick and help you get a really good impression with these stamps. 
Now, I don't often do an entirely stamped layout. I will mostly incorporate stamps and stickers together like I'm going to go ahead and do this week. So I had that big stamped icon where I wrote my activity and actually it was an appointment. And then now down below, I'm going to add a sticker for my to-do list, which I always have. Now let's do the same thing for Tuesday, priming the stamp, adding the ink to it, and then I will press firmly. Now, I did not get firm pressure on the whole thing. See that? So I did not put more ink on. I just lined the stamp back up and re-stamped it. Now the reason I left that there, because I could have certainly edited that out, was to let you know that this is user error. This is not a problem with the stamps. And you're going to have that. That it's not an exact science. But there's an easy way to fix it. And if there were not an easy way to fix it, I could have just simply covered it with a sticker. Now I'm going to go ahead and ink up this stamp and press it down firmly with even coverage through over the whole stamp down at the bottom. But again, this is another way to clean off your stamps simply by taking a piece of scratch paper and just stamping off all of the excess ink. A lot of people don't like that method because some ink will remain on the stamp in terms of just visually and people don't really like that. It doesn't bother me at all. I don't do that because, like I said already, I'm super messy and I know I would end up with excess ink on my fingertips which I would then transfer to my paper and that's not something that I'm particularly interested in. Now I have another activity that I need to add here and so what I'm going to do is I'm going to choose just a small bullet point st stamp to highlight that activity. This is one of my favorite techniques because you still add a something that will draw your eye to that appointment, but it doesn't take up a lot of visual room. And you don't need a lot of room on the page to make this happen either. So I feel like adding bullet points to your pages is a really good way to fill in activities or appointments or reminders without taking up a ton of room. Now remember, I like to incorporate not only stickers, but also, or not only stamps, but also stickers. I like the way that the variety looks on the page. So I'm going to take this full box sticker and use it up in the top row for just a tiny bit of decoration. I don't tend to be a huge decorator, especially this time of year because my schedule is very, very busy, but I do like to add a little bit here and there just to keep things fun and to make the page just not completely boring, you know, just add a little bit of visual interest. Now I also want to add that it's Valentine's Day and so since the Happy Planner has so many beautiful scripty stickers that remind us of Valentine's Day or other holidays or different dates, so as you can see I'm going to flip through this book and there's just a couple of cute stickers that I just had to absolutely incorporate the sweetheart one because you'll see where I place that in just a minute. It's just adorable. But then also this Valentine's Day sticker. It goes really well with the heart full box and it looks really cute and I have room for it as well. If it, if I didn't what didn't have a way to make it fit, I would obviously not include it, but I do and so it was just the perfect fit right there on my page. Now I want to continue planning, but I also need to figure out sort of my overall plan of attack. I know I need to incorporate some more to-do lists, and so I'm going to use this heart checklist that is included in this sheet of stickers. Now again, sometimes it'll be a little bit difficult to get the stamps off the page, and what you'll want to do is make sure you just pull firmly and evenly, but not too hard. Now I got a little bit of ink on the edge of the stamp and I'm simply using the little piece of a baby wipe to clean that off only because like I mentioned to you before I am a messy crafter and so I know that I'll make a mess with that extra ink and I just don't want that to be the case. I would be a little bit disappointed. I love stamped checklists. There's no bulk when you add your pen to that. So when you go ahead and you just make your check marks or your X's or whatever, there's absolutely no bulk there and you can add as big of a check mark or an X as needed without coming to the edge of the sticker and then maybe having that little break, you know, like the with the dimension from the sticker to the page. Now I've simply just stamped to do right there above my to-do list. Obviously I know that it's my to-do list, but every now and again I just like the way that adding some really cute typography looks in my planner. And then also breaking up a little bit of the pink and the red with that black. 
Now the new sticker rolls have been really, really fun to incorporate in my planner pages, and I love using some of them in different ways. So if, for example, this you are here, I'm going to use that even though I'm not traveling. And also I love that I can just simply cut off the used portion of this roll and make my roll smaller and tidy and keep it really neat. Now I'm just going to layer that right here and I'm only say layer because I'm going to let it overlap that edge of the box. But I like the way that that looks. I think it makes it a little bit more interesting and not so quite up and down linear, but it fits just perfectly and I think it looks really great there especially with all those different shades of pink as well. And then obviously I've thrown in a little bit of red for fun too. Now I'll go ahead and incorporate the next half of the page. And obviously I'm going to stick to the same overall theme and ideas for planning this particular week. Now I'm going to use the same round stamp block and then that heart checklist as well with the red VersaFine ink. So I'm going to go ahead and line it up and then I'll use firm, even pressure. And I did not place too much ink on the stamp because it just really does not create a crisp and clean image. So now we have two of those heart checklists and I think those really turned out great right there. Now I want to do the little nail polish jar again because to notate getting my nails done and I'm just going to ink that right up. Now this is going to be an example again like the other icon where I didn't apply the pressure throughout the entire thing because sometimes with these smaller ones I get a little nervous that I'm pressing too hard but no matter because I can just simply reline it up and then stamp it again and it goes perfectly fine. So don't add more ink, simply just reline it up and then press down again. And I, like I said already, I could have edited those bits out. I didn't have to leave those there for you, but I chose to leave them because I wanted to share with you that stamping can be difficult. And I know I already said that, but I know a lot of people really get discouraged in stamping and there's no reason to get discouraged in stamping. Your practice will make better. Now, I love the little check marks on the clipboard. I think this is just absolutely adorable and I love using it for my to-do list. So I've simply inked it all up with the red VersaFine again and I think that just looks positively adorable. And one of the good things about this, like the checklist, is that you can just use it over and over and over and over and over again and you're never gonna run out. See, there's that sweetheart, remember when I told you earlier? It's just so stinking cute and I'm super excited about using it this week. Now you can see that I didn't have a ton of activities on Monday and so I've just gone ahead and added that right there and I'm really excited about how it looks, especially the combination of the red and the pinks too. Now I want to add a little bit more decor. I don't have as much going on at the end of the week thanks to President's Day weekend, which after a weekend like we have had recently, I'm very excited to have a slightly calmer week. Now I just want to stick with the sort of love theme of the week and then also the pink and red color palette. I don't have any other real ideas other than that. So when I found this beautiful script quote that is in bright pink, I knew that it would be perfect on my page. So I simply split it, split it between those four boxes right there. Still leaves me room to have other things in there, but then also just looks really pretty. Now I'm going to use this bright pink Tombow dual brush pen. I absolutely love the color. It's beautiful. And the way that the pens write is just magnificent. So I'm always really excited when I can incorporate those into my planning. Now I'm going to go ahead and stamp this weekend stamp and it's a really long stamp. So I'm going to pull out a long rectangular stamp block so that I can execute this well. I've rubbed it over the back of my hand and then now I'm just going to line it up for where I want it to be on the page and I'll place the red VersaFine ink right on top of that. Again, applying enough ink but not too much. Then the firm even pressure throughout the stamp and voila. And again, I can use this a thousand times over and over and over again and it's one of the really exciting things about stamps that once you've made the investment, there's really very little cost associated going forward. Now I'm going to peel off this particular stamp, which it's a little bit wider. It would fit, I believe, within the lines of the Big Happy Planner, but I don't even care because I love it when stamps or stickers overlap the lines 
in the columns. And so I'm just using a magenta colored Versa Color ink, and I'm going to leave that down there on Saturday for the activity. Now I'm going to do my very best to link you up to all of these products in the description if I'm able to find them, but sometimes that's a little bit easier said than done. So I'm going to just write the activity in that box, and I love it because there's plenty of room here, yet it is still really nice and concise with that rectangular shape. Now again, another bullet point. This time I'm using it right in the center as opposed to over on the left hand side. And I love to use both, so I don't think that I really have a favorite. I think that the using it in the center allows me a little bit more space to write, but if I don't need as much space, I can just use it over either on the right or the left hand side and just add a little bit of things that I need there. I'm going to add the book down at the bottom for my book club and I just it's so cute and such a fun way to denote book club for me personally. Now I know I still want to add maybe one more piece of decoration because it's really I still have a lot of white space left and I'm pretty much finished with my plans and activities, appointments, you know, those types of things. So I might as well go ahead and add a really fun decorative sticker. So again, I've stuck with the pink and red color palette, selecting a pink little banner to go down there at the bottom. Look how fun that is. Isn't it really cute? And then now I'll just go ahead and finish adding in all of the details for my book club meeting on Sunday evening. Now I can see that this layout still needs a little bit more. So I want to add just something else that will make it really cute and I think washi seems to always fit the bill. So once I've got this laid down, I will get it all trimmed up and that's pretty much it for me. Thanks so much guys for stopping by and watching my video. I really do appreciate it. If you have any questions or comments, please leave them in the box below and I will do my very best to get back to you. Thank you so much and make it a great day.